So, Kim Darwaza here with Remax, and I am here with my favorite loan officer, Christine Yurko, with Movement Mortgage. Uh, we've both been in our profession through um, different market types. I've been in the business for 18 years, so I've been in a slow market before Christine has as well. So, I know there's a lot of headlines out there that are terrifying or, you know, they they're just not accurate. So we want to um, talk about a program, a loan program that can help you if you um, find a house you love, it's affordable for you, you can handle the payments, you need to move. Uh, this is a program that I think will really help you out because as you all know, the interest rates have doubled in the last year. I mean, more than double. Yeah, so they've gone up 3.83 percentage points since the end of last year alone, and it's the biggest year-to-date increase in over 50 years. So I know for a lot of people, they read the headlines and it freaks them out. So we're here to, um, you know, clarify some of these things. And, you know, while the interest rates will probably continue to still go up a little bit, it's not going to be at that accelerated pace. So there um, is a loan program mm -hmm. that I think really works. Uh, we're gonna use $800,000 yep. because that's sort of a median house here in our marketplace and we're still in the conforming loan limit. Uh, it's not jumbo money that number, the jumbo money, is going to go up. Christine. Right, right now they're saying that it would probably, the high balance conforming loan limit right now is uh, probably gonna go up in the beginning of 2023 uh, for Fannie and Freddie and FHA and VA as well. But it's probably gonna go up to 1.023 million, 1 million 23,000. Again, they have not finalized that yet, so don't hold me to it, but that's looking like that. So at that, that conventional loan limit, if you've bought a house for 1.27 million, $1 million, you'd still be in the conforming loan loan 20% down. So that's the purchase loan. They say 1.3 million. You put a little more down, you'll still be in the conforming loan. Right, because so most, be, I, I'm gonna say uh, most people in that price point do, do put 20% mm -hmm. down, 15 to 20%. Uh, but we're gonna stick more in the $800,000 range, which Again, Just for our example, we're going to use a house right. selling and eight for eight hundred. If you're watching this from somewhere else, we're in Northern Virginia, and our house prices tend to be higher than a majority of the country. So if you're saying eight hundred thousand, whoa, that's a lot. That that's just for our particular market. Mm -hmm. So um, why don't you tell us about an option we have? Okay. So um, the option that we are that we're looking at now it is uh, attractive to a lot of borrowers is a temporary two one or one one buy down we also will be putting out a three two one buy down um, but we're just going to talk about the general two one buy down and the one one buy down the two one buy down for our example will probably be the best one to talk about because or because that's what people are looking for so an eight hundred thousand dollars sales price uh i mean loan amount excuse me um at 6.5 percent today's rate a uh, well-qualified borrower putting 20% down, that would be their good, a good rate that they would um, be able to get today uh, with no points. Um, so if they did a 2-1 buy-down, they'd be asking, generally asking the seller, any interested party can, can contribute to this, but we're generally going to be asking the seller for this. They would ask the seller for approximately $18,000 to buy down their rate for two years. The, so the first year of the rate would be 4.5%, and then the first 12 payments would be 4.5%. The second 12 payments would be 5.5%, and then once they went to the, the fully uh, indexed rate at 6.5% would be at their 35th payment. Okay, and the hope with all this would be that the interest rates come down within two or so years, and that you would refinance yourself out of the situation, but um, exactly. I, at that interest rate, I will just, just tell you that um, when I bought my first home, the interest rate was approaching 8%. Exactly. And I think a lot of people, you know, that was 23 years ago, people will say, well, houses were cheaper then. Well, our, my salary Income was, was like one-fifth or one-sixth of, of what it is today. So it's all relative. Mm -hmm. 
and where you're buying and you know, you're not yeah. like you Kim would know that you know prices don't generally go down around here you're always going to be building equity the longer you live in the property right and we we also tell our clients that you know it, you need to stay in the home optimally would be 10 8 to 10 years three to three to five is fine but again if you have to move we are in a very transient market and rental properties do extremely well here because we have a lot of military um, coming in for two three years at a time so you could always um, hold it as an investment property which would be um, great financially for the long term right so so just to give an example some of your clients might say why would I want to do eighteen thousand dollars seller credit from an eight hundred thousand sales price and go down to why wouldn't I just ask the seller to lower their sales price by seven hundred to seven hundred eighty thousand right. dollars? Basically, take that twenty thousand dollars in credit and instead lower the price. So, just for an example, if the price was reduced to seven eighty and you got the par rate of six point five, your principal and interest payment is going to be four hundred four thousand nine hundred thirty dollars a month. That's your principal and interest. If you did the the two one buy down, your principal and interest payment is first going to be for the first twelve months going to be forty four thousand fifty three. The second twelve months. It's going to be 45 42 and then you if you went all the way to your 35th month payment month and you had to go up to the 6.5 and pay that you're going to be paying uh, 5056 so basically you're saving it's 126 dollars a month if you just have the sell buy down price and you have two years of gaining equity and keeping that money and the other good thing about this is that if for some reason you can refinance in six months rates come down you know six months from now and they're down to fours again or you know even low fives and it makes sense for you to refinance obviously a point and a half is going to you know, make sense for you to refinance out of any of my money left in that impound account for your rate buy down is going to immediately go down and reduce your principal so you're going to be able to use those funds to reduce your principal anyway mm -hmm. and i'll think so one thing that i'll say is you know it's great if you can have the seller pay for this and I know that um, in previous markets and I've already been seeing price reductions so the difference between them reducing the price and giving you the money it's it's all the same you know obviously six months ago you couldn't ask this from seller but now that we're getting into a more normal it's still a sell let's be clear it still is considered a seller's market because we still have our inventory um, compared to, let me just tell you, uh, we still have 36% less inventory today than we did the same week in 2019. So, so we're still in an, in an active seller's we're market. We're still in an active seller's market. And there are um, pockets where we live where, yes, if the house is amazing, and well done they might still get eight contracts and then we have other houses that sit on the market for 30 days and they wind up selling for less than the list price and or they pay seller concessions so um, this is a viable option yeah. not for every house but we can identify houses where the seller and obviously every seller is different mm -hmm. where they would be more likely to buy into this strategy because they need to move. Right, and I mean, and you're gonna do your due diligence right. and make sure the house is gonna appraise no matter what. So you're right. not overpaying for the houses. You're gonna make sure that they're not gonna right. do that. And honestly, we haven't, I haven't personally haven't seen too many appraisers. I feel like the appraisers are just like, okay, whatever, for the last <laughs> It's <laughs> not when last the mortgage year. crash. I mean, sometimes I'm like, I can't believe that house appraised. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. it's like, because a few years ago, like I would, no, we would have problems right so, yeah so my advice is in the high interest rate is um, date the rate marry the house right so if you really love the house don't let the high interest rate stop you from buying it there are ways of eventually coming down to your payment and or the first couple of years we will be like I said we will have a 3-1 buy down but that's asking for a huge seller concession so right. it's not gonna be as popular and then if there is a negotiation period and you can still do the one year buy down that's not asking for a lot of money so right and I will say, um, you know, that was one of the smartest decisions I made, even though my rate was almost 8%, was buying um, because the amount of equity I have in my house mm -hmm. and even owning it and going through the last mortgage crisis, you know, it 
my house topped out at like four hundred thousand dollars more than I paid for it, and then it dipped down maybe one hundred fifty thousand dollars during the mortgage crisis, and then we went back up. Right, and far exceeded it. A, another hundred thousand dollars at least over what right. it topped out at the last time. Right. So, so as long as you have patience, you, have to you always think long-term investment. Always, right? You're always going to be able to take advantage of that. And especially our market is a very exactly. We're in a um, transient market. market. We have secure job security here mm -hmm. with the government jobs. So, you know, other places in the country, um, I couldn't say the same thing, but yeah. Okay. All right, well, as always, you can uh, call, text, or email uh, Christine or I with any questions. I will definitely um, include her contact information as well. And thanks for watching. Have a good one. Thanks.